Hello everyone, in this lecture, we will study about face margin. So we have seen already in the previous lecture, the one mantra statement for this particular heading, stability and frequency compensation, is that to ensure stability, beta h, the magnitude of beta h, okay, the gain, the loop gain must drop to unity before the face angle beta h crosses minus 180 degree. Okay, so here we have considered a marginal case where the small margin is there between gx and px. It is depicted in this figure that gx, the gain crossover frequency is slightly below the phase crossover frequency. Okay, and we have taken an example that the gain crossover frequency occur at an angle of minus 175 degree. Okay, so when we draw a diagram for the closed loop transfer function, what we see that there is a sharp peak in the vicinity at which omega is equal to omega 1. So let us look over its plot that how these closed loop system respond in this marginal case. Okay, we have taken that uh, the loop gain beta j omega will be equals to exponent of minus j 175 degree. As we have taken the at green crossover frequency, the phase is 175 degree. So we have for the closed loop system that is y upon x j omega 1 is equals to h j omega 1 upon 1 plus beta h j omega 1. Okay, substituting all the values 1 upon beta from here, nj omega 1 can be written as 1 upon beta exponent minus j 175 degree. We have substituted this value in this equation and solving it further, converting into the complex system, imaginary system, and then further we solve and we get this the magnitude of the closed loop gain is this. Solving it further, it, it will be equals to 11.5 upon beta. So we find that at lower frequency, where at this lower frequency, y of the magnitude of closed loop transfer function will be equals to 1 upon beta. It is uh, totally dependent upon beta, the feedback factor. It is inversely proportional of feedback factor. So this closed loop frequency response exhibit a sharp P in the vicinity of W equals to W1. We have already seen in the diagram that there is a sharp P at omega is equals to omega 1. At frequency of omega 1 or w1 whatever you call it in other words we can say the closed loop system is near oscillation in this marginal case and its step response yt exhibits a very underdamped behavior okay we have seen over here that we have taken its uh, inverse we find that the response show the time domain response is that it shows the underdamped behavior okay so this point reveals that the second order system where the system is having two poles the second order system the two poles of a closed loop system suffer from ringing although the system is stable so this is the very important point that when gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency are very close to each other they have a marginal difference that is the gain crossover frequency is occurs at an angle of minus 175 degree then the system shows the ringing effect whereas the step response shows the under damped behavior where it shows that it may have ringing effect while the system is stable okay so for the another case where there is a large margin between the gain crossover and the phase crossover frequency the gain crossover proceeds by px precedes px by a greater margin then we expect a relatively well behaved closed loop response in both the frequency domain as well as in the time domain okay so we conclude that the greater is the spacing between this gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency while this gain crossover frequency will always be remain below the phase crossover frequency okay the more stable the feedback system or we can say alternatively the phase of beta h at gx at this gx 
can serve as a stability measure. Okay, the smaller the angle beta at at this particular point at gain crossover frequency, the more the stable this is our system is. Okay, so now we will define this term as phase margin, which is equals to one eighty degree plus phase angle beta at that is loop gain of phase angle of loop gain at a frequency of omega is equals to omega one. This omega one is the gain crossover frequency. Okay, we have taken another example where a, a two-pole feedback system is designed such that the magnitude uh, is uh, at omega p two is unity, while omega p one is less than omega p two. So it is shown over this uh, body plot that the phase angle is minus one thirty-five degree at omega p two. Okay, so we can uh, see that this system will be stable. Okay, while this phase angle which is minus 135 degree at this particular frequency omega p2 and the phase margin is equal to 45 degree. How it comes? 180 keeping the angle here uh, that is minus 135 degree. The phase margin will equal to 45 degree. This example also suggests that for a phase margin have uh, which is greater than 45 degree, the gain crossover frequency must lie between the first pole. The gain crossover frequency may be around somewhere here. It will lie up between the first pole and the second pole. Okay, in the absence of zeros, that is the main point. That is the unity gain bandwidth cannot exceed the second pole frequency. Okay, so this is all in this lecture. We have seen that how uh, there is a there should be a well defined margin between the gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency. It should not be Very close to each other, there should be a proper margin which should be a greater than 45 degree. And in the next lecture, we will study about how much phase margin should be adequate to have the stability condition. Okay, in the marginal case, the system stable, but it can have remain affected. So this is all in this lecture. Thank you.